What's up everyone and welcome back to another new comic book day haul. I'm your host AR Comics and today I'm going to be going over my top 10 list for new comic book day, July 28th, 2021. And yes, you are looking at another background change, but it's not my normal room. I'm at home visiting my family in Pennsylvania on a nice little vacation. It's been a long time since I took a vacation, but you know what? The new comics do not stop. So I'm going to be continuing putting out these top 10 lists. I love talking about these books with you and there's just no way I was going to take a little break from it. But before I get started off on these top 10 issues, if you are new to the channel, I drop weekly comic book content that'll keep you up to date on all of the latest releases. So if you don't want to miss out on that, make sure you hit the subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And now, without further ado, let's get started on this week's top 10 list. So I hope you're all are having a fantastic new comic book day this week and you've enjoyed all of the books you've read so far. I picked up a total of 11 different issues this week. As I was saying before, I am at home visiting my family in Pennsylvania, so some of the harder to get indie titles, the more exclusives, might be a little hard for me to get. I might not be able to grab them. It's not my typical pull list, but the shop that I go to is incredible. They're called The Encounter. It's in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. They have literally pretty much everything that you could ask for. Comics, Pop Funko, hardcovers. Literally, if you could think of it, they most likely have it. And if they don't, they can probably get it for you. So before I get started off on this list, as always, I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. But you guys already know, sometimes spoilers do happen. I get carried away talking about some of these books. Just be aware of that. But I do a pretty good job letting you guys know ahead of time that a spoiler is about to happen. So that's the first issue. I'm not going to be getting too into it, but I honestly did really like it. It's DC's Robin, issue number four. This is cover A. This list was just so hard to put together that this one didn't make the top ten list because I honestly just really did like the other ones that much. With this one, it picks up pretty much right where the last one left off. They bring in Ra's al Ghul with this one. It's just kind of an issue where Damien's trying to figure himself out and he needs to get his inner problems figured out before he can really take on this tournament. There's so many other things that really happen in this issue too. Like I was saying, I really liked it. The artwork's incredible, but these issues, they're just that good. And now let's talk about the real top 10 list. All right, so to kick this top 10 list off this week, we've got coming in at number 10. This is Marvel's brand new series, Amazing Fantasy, issue number one. This is cover A. So when I first grabbed this book and I started flipping through it, I thought to myself, this isn't going to be for me. It's a bunch of short stories. It's got Captain America, Black Widow, Spider-Man, but I had a pre-order and I wasn't going to put it back. As I started reading it too, I thought, man, this really isn't going to be for me because not only was it short stories, but it was short stories that were kind of left on a cliffhanger. And I thought to myself, is this really what this mini series is going to be about? It's just a bunch of short stories that aren't even wrapped up in this issue. And then we're going to be reading issue after issue, kind of figuring out and remembering what happened in the last one. But it's not like that. So artwork aside, because they kind of changed it up throughout the Captain America, Black Widow and Spider-Man stories. I like the Black Widow one the most as far as the artwork goes, but they threw a little plot twist in that kind of brings it all together and everything that happened in these individual stories all got brought in at the same time towards the end and that was really cool to me. So for those reasons, it's still coming in at number 10 because Overall, I thought it was okay, but because of that plot twist towards the very end, I cannot wait to see where they go with this one. So we've got coming in at number 10, Amazing Fantasy, issue number one. Next up, we've got coming in at number nine this week. This is Boom Studios, Berserker, issue number four. This is cover A, and if you've read the rest of the series so far, you've definitely read this one too. It almost feels as if every single issue is the exact same thing now. We got a little beginning with the main character, and he's kind of going back into his thoughts. He's trying to figure things out, and it just goes straight into his backstory. All it is is fighting. There's a bunch of carnage. It's blood and gore and all of that stuff. And I thought, you know what? At some point, we're going to need a little bit more info. And each issue, they kind of drop just a little bit of hints of just his backstory, maybe something that can kill him, which kind of happened in this issue. We didn't get a lot of info on it. And I think from this series so far, I just want a lot more story. I know there's, I think, eight more issues, so they can definitely do something with it. But as of now, it's just okay. It feels as if I'm reading the exact same thing every single time. And just personally, I want a little bit more out of the story. Keanu Reeves, I know he's new to writing, but Matt Kent, he's a phenomenal writer. And the artwork, I'm digging the artwork as well. So we've got coming in at number nine, Berserker, issue number four. Next up, we've got coming in at number eight this week. This is Images Vinyl, issue number two. This is cover A. I'm not really sure how I feel about this series so far. I really like the first issue. It was intriguing, kind of left me on a little mystery, like I want some more. This one... I'm still just as confused as the first issue. We've got the main character. You know, he's a serial killer, but now he's bringing more people into it. He's still trying to save his friend that's kind of caught up with this cult right now. He's being held captive. 
And so many things kind of happen in between. I don't really want to spoil exactly everything, but he brings some other serial killers into it. And he's basically using this FBI agent as well to just infiltrate this cult to save his friend. Like I said, there's a lot more. There's a bunch of action. We get to see some killing going on. Definitely check this one out. As of now, I think it's really just an intriguing series. It's very mysterious. I just want to know a lot more about these characters and a lot more about this cult even. And I think there's only five or six issues with this one. So at some point, we're going to be getting a lot of info. Definitely stick with it because I know I am. So we've got vinyl issue number two coming in at number eight. Next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number seven. This is Boom Studios. Something is killing the children. Issue number 18. This is cover A. And yes, you are looking at that correctly. Something is killing the children did not make number one this week or even the top five list. But that doesn't mean I didn't like the issue. To me, this was a complete filler issue. And even as a filler it felt very unimportant. Almost nothing really happened. I think I read it in one breath, and then after I blinked, it was actually done. And I started flipping through it again like I missed a couple pages or something. It felt like there was almost no dialogue. Now, if you are interested in spec, there was a first appearance. I know this series has completely taken off. All the issues are selling for a lot of money. Not as much the newer ones because some people, you know, they started to catch on that this series is selling for a lot. But this does have a first appearance. He's probably going to be a major character, at least in this arc, maybe continuing on. Who really knows with this one? But with this one, we basically just get to see where Erica Slaughter is going to start her training and there's not really much more to it. I could spoil a little bit of stuff, but I'd rather you just read it for yourself. It only takes about five seconds. So we've got coming in at number seven, Something is Killing the Children, issue number 18. Next up, we've got coming in at number six this week. This is Marvel's Black Widow, issue number nine. This is cover A, and this series continues to surprise me. I am loving it. Kelly Thompson stays on fire with this one. And not just the story that's being told or the artwork that's being presented in front of us, but the pacing. I think the pacing is what really sets this series so different compared to a lot of other Marvel ones right now. So with this one, we got a little bit of everything. It wrapped up what happened in the last issue. We got a little bit of storytelling. And this is what I was just talking about with the Something is killing the children issue. I know not every single issue is going to have a ton of info. Maybe it's action packed. Maybe some are just focused on some plot progression. But with that one, like I was saying, I took one breath. I blinked once. The issue was over with this one. Even it wrapped everything up. We got a little bit of plot progression to really see where the story was going. And then it started in the next part of everything with a ton of action where I feel so invested in some of these characters as well. I love all of them right now. So Kelly Thompson, I know you're not watching this, but if you ever do, you are absolutely killing it on this series. Congratulations. You need to check this one out. It's only getting better by the issue. It's just so developed at this point, and I know they're just going to dive even deeper into these characters and the story too. So for those reasons, we've got Black Widow issue number nine coming in at number six. And now we're down to the top five issues of the week. We've got coming in at number five this week. This is AWA Studios, The Resistance Uprising. Issue number four, this is cover A, and this issue was so much better than I thought it was going to be. So I've talked about it in the past. Admittedly, this series hasn't been my favorite. The Resistance itself wasn't one of my more favorite ones from AWA. So this one obviously is going to fall suit with The Resistance. They're dealing with all the reborns, but this issue went above and beyond to me. So it picks up pretty much where the last one left off, but with this one, so we have the regular Resistance reborns who aren't really interested in registering with the government and identifying themselves but then the government is going above and beyond so they're using reborns to basically capture these reborns and if they don't want to help capture the other ones they're going to be just as much shit as the other ones are going to be there's a lot of other stuff that happens as well and now if you are interested in spec because i know chariot did get option from awa this one does have a first appearance of a bunch of different characters and it's more of a team first appearance too so you never know where this could go in the future but i'd say overall wait for the trade paperback if you're a spec person obviously grab this issue but i think they need to be read together there's just been so much time between each issue the first resistance series i know there was a one shot that came out as well so there's a lot of resistance stuff even moths the other awa series is kind of tied into this one too just a lot of stuff in the reborn world so for those reasons we got the resistance uprising issue number four coming in at number five Next up on my list this week, we've got coming in at number four. I was just talking about this one. We've got AWA Studios, Chariot, issue number five of five. So this is the end of the series. This is also cover A, and what a phenomenal job that they did with this one. Congratulations, AWA. Such an incredible series. Well-deserved option. I believe Warner Brothers picked this one up. It's going to be an incredible TV show or movie. But what I really like about this one is this issue alone, the colors. The colors absolutely stood out. Everything popped. They used a dark background with some nice 
nice purple and pink just to really bring everything out to just showcase the two characters that were talking and having a nice little moment. The other thing that at first I really wasn't too sure of is that they've been building up Jillian's sister. I believe that was her name, the chariot. They have building up the sister the entire time with what she was trying to do. I don't want to spoil it for you, but then it kind of ended and I thought, man, that was kind of weak, but that was just a small picture in just the big idea that they have. They are planning another volume with this one because the end of it, it did say end of volume one. And now it's just the two main characters and they're just off trying to save other people and bring down this big corporation that had her sister basically under their command. I can't wait to see where they go with this series. I'm going to be picking it up 100%. Now that the series is over, if you haven't already had a chance to do it, definitely grab a trade paperback when they come out with it. But for those reasons, we've got Chariot issue number five coming in at number four. And here we go. We're down to the top three issues of the week. We've got coming in at number three this week, and this series continues to be a massive surprise. We've got Marvel's The United States of Captain America, issue number two. This is the variant. I believe it's the design variant, but I'm not 100% sure on that. This is also the first appearance of Nichelle Wright, one of the other underground Captain Americas. Now, I'm not sure if these first appearances are going to mean anything in the long run, but you know, these characters stay likable. I'm going to continue supporting this series, and for you speckers out there, you know, Never know where it's going to go in the future. So with this one, one reason I continue to like this series is that it's kind of split into two stories. You've got the main one and a little backup story. And while I usually talk a lot of shit on the backup stories, it makes a lot of sense for this one. So the first story is you have the real Captain America and the Falcon, and they're out still trying to find who these bad guys are. Who's trying to make a bad name for the real Captain America? Is trying to bring down the United States shield and all of that stuff. But then they slowly introduce the new Captain America, and in this case, it's Nichelle Wright. They give her a little bit of story. They're still off trying to find who the bad guys are. But then the backup story is actually a story just on Nichelle Wright. And I think it's really well done. Definitely check this series out. I've seen a lot of people talking some shit on this series. I think it's very good. I really like the artwork as well. Let me know down below in the comment section what you've thought of it so far. But for those reasons, we've got the United States of Captain America. Issue number two coming in at number three. Next up, we've got coming in at number two this week. This is Images, The Scumbag, issue number nine. This is cover A, and I know I talked about it, I think in issue eight, that that was the best artwork story combo. If that was the case, no, this is definitely the one to me. This artwork was incredible. Some of the best artwork of this series so far. I know some of the other issues have had very good artwork too, but to me, this was the best artwork and just overall story. I absolutely love this issue. Picks up where the last one left off, and now if you're reading it, you're going to know what I'm talking about. Ernie has basically created an entire world of just Ernie's. The villains, they wanted to go out of the way to make just love across the world but no Ernie he did his thing and everyone is now a Ernie light they're out there they're doing drugs they're drinking and it's just pure chaos the only problem I had with this one is I wanted to see more of this screwed up world maybe this issue could have been completely that just kind of a breeze you know what I mean not a lot of plot not a lot of dialogue just seeing a world of Ernie's just causing so much destruction and chaos. But instead, they actually had a nice story with this one. We've got Ernie who's actually trying to kind of fix everything. I'm not gonna be getting too in depth with it. This series overall is just, you know what you're getting into. It's gonna be a little funny. We've got some humor, and just Ernie is just a complete piece of shit. So we've got coming in at number two, the scumbag issue number nine. And this is it, my top read of the week. We've got coming in at number one this week. This is Images, The Department of Truth, issue number 11. This is cover A, and man, I love this series. I don't know if I'm just a little biased. I know it is getting awards, but I love conspiracies. This issue, they are hunting Bigfoot still. They've hit on aliens before. They've even talked about JFK a bit and so many other cool stuff. The next one is going to be awesome too. So I guess this is kind of the end of the little arc that they have been on. But man, so I went into this thinking they're going to be hunting Bigfoot. It's going to be a really action-packed kind of badass issue, but they kind of went away from that and it was still such a well-told story. So with this one, they kept bringing in these journal entries that they did in the last issue. And this one pretty much continued on with the journal entries, but you could see him getting a little bit older in life. Things are just progressing a bit more. But man, those entries just were so nice. And then even when they weren't showing those entries and it was the actual issue itself with all of our main characters, in my mind, I'm kind of thinking, well, I want to go back to read those a little bit. I want a little bit more info. Because when those entries aren't on the pages, it's not really a lot of dialogue. It's just the main characters that are kind of there and it shows them hunting 
wanting a little bit. But man, once you hit that ending, everything just came together. It kind of was like a really wholesome ending. And I don't know. Personally, I just really love this series. I thought this issue and this small little mini arc was actually extremely well done. James Titan IV, you continue to kill it with this one. So for those reasons, we've got the Department of Truth issue number 11 coming in at number one. So what do you guys think about this week's new comic book day? There were honestly so many awesome issues. I know I missed out on a few as well. I think I forgot about Batman Reptilian issue number two. I am going to get that at some point though, but I had a really hard time putting some of those books in order. Robin issue four, you didn't deserve to not make the top 10 list, but this week was just too good. Let me know down below in the comment section what your favorite issue of the week was and which ones you think I missed out on. And thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you don't want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified every time I drop new content because you won't regret it. And I've got two more videos sitting off to the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.